Coming up on show 724, how much does the cold weather really affect the range of an EV? Well, stick around, we'll find out. Plus, we're talking about Panasonic suspending battery production at a big factory. Skoda, Bentley, Volvo, Rivian updates as well. Ford taking their EV campaign on the road and Mercedes-Benz selling EVs in India. Those stories and many more on today's podcast. Well, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. This is what happened on Saturday, 21st of March. Martin Lee here and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Well, Panasonic announced it's going to scale down their operations and temporarily suspend lithium-ion battery cell production at Tesla's Gigafactory. Of course, that's in Nevada, and they said they'll do that for 14 days. That's because of the continued virus outbreak reports inside EVs. They say the news follows Tesla's announcement about closing the Fremont factory and the New York factory. That closure will happen from March 24th. But it's quite surprising, as Tesla didn't give any sign, at least yesterday, that the Gigafactory was going to have any kind of disruption or closure, even temporarily. At the moment, there's no official comment uh, from Tesla themselves at the time of recording. It's unsurprising that another big factory that employs thousands of workers won't be operating. The statement from Panasonic, though, says this. Panasonic is committed to safeguarding the health and well-being of every employee. The Panasonic factory in Sparks, Nevada, will begin ramping down operations early next week and close for 14 days. Employees impacted by the closure will receive full pay and benefits for a 14-day period. In the meantime, Panasonic has enacted several measures to enhance the cleanliness of the facility, encourage social distancing, and enable simple, safe, and effective behaviours. Uh, during the 14-day period, the facility will undergo intensive cleaning. Talking about more closure and disruption, Skoda has closed its check plants because of the pandemic. Bentley, Mo Bentley Motors is suspending their production from today. At their factory in the UK, it's in a place called Crew. The factory headquarters are going to close down for four weeks. Volvo is temporarily closing their plants in the US and Sweden because of the coronavirus. Volvo's Swedish factories are all in places that sound like IKEA furniture. Torslander, Skovsdi, Olfostrom. I think I've got the Olfostrom wardrobe. Uh, its US plant in South Carolina will close between March 26th and April 14th. The company said their plant in Ghent in Belgium has already been temporarily shut down. And I hope you don't mind me making light of a very serious subject. We can still have a laugh, can't we, you and I, uh, at, uh, at IKEA jokes. Rivian updated on their Twitter by saying to keep our teams safe and slow the spread of COVID-19. We've shut down all Rivian facilities. We're committed to everyone on our team. Our salaried and hourly workforce will continue to be paid during the shutdown. Stay safe, everyone, says Rivian. And whilst, of course, no, OK, so of course it's amazing that people are still being paid to effectively sit at home. Some people are being cleaning. Some people are coming in to upgrade factories in that time. Some people are genuinely being paid to stay at home. A lot of these announcements are for 14 days. And so definitely our thoughts are all about how long this will go on for and how long people will continue to get paid for when they're not actually making anything. Let's hope that they still, you know, we know that feeling at the minute. My wife is on maternity for a year and that maternity money after the first few months. We're very, very fortunate, by the way. She works for, she's a nurse for the NHS. And, you know, we get some money at the beginning of her maternity year off. And she's opted to take a year. We both have decided, so it's longer than some take. But uh, that ramps down pretty quickly. So we we are feeling the full effect at the minute of living off one uh, one income. But, you know, we wanted to do that. It's a very, very important year that we're going through for various reasons. And this is not a year that we want to be... Um, you know, both going back to work and worrying about somebody else looking after the little fella. So too important to uh, to do that. And we'll deal with that. But, I, you know, kind of in a small way, I have firsthand experience at the moment of salaries disappearing. And yeah, thoughts are with everybody who is, of course, affected. Let's talk about Ford and their EV campaign. It's become fashionable to lambast 
legacy automakers for being quick to promise electric cars, but actually slow to do so. But some are putting their money where their mouth is, says Steve Hanley at Kling Technica. Well, here in the UK, Ford has made a Go Electric campaign that is designed to tour the country, uh, bringing the word about electric cars to every city and, they say, village in the country. Really, Ford? lots of those. Anyway, uh, they're going to do a very good job, they say, of spreading the word about EVs, not just their own cars, but generally selling the benefits of electric vehicles and that for which they're doing. We must applaud Ford. They call it a unique, immersive and interactive experience designed to help customers make an informed choice on EVs. There's hands-on engaging activities to demystify electrification and inspire confidence in consumers, many of whom are confused about different types of powertrain. Some people have even been sold the great lie that a car that you have to put petrol in can somehow be clean. Cleaner, maybe, than a stinky old diesel, not denying that. Uh, but, you know, there's certain advertising campaigns around at the minute, which I'm not massively keen on, uh, which I do think mislead, generally mislead the public into believing that some sort of hybrid trickery is in any way the same as a pure electric car. So well done Ford for doing that. I thought that the campaign they were doing was just in London. Uh, so I know people that went to go see that campaign and it was a uh, Marble Arch. Um, it was a big road show they put on. They were there, they were sort of camped in a, in a big famous landmark in London with their, their display for quite a long time actually, a few, several days, maybe more than a week. And I had no idea that that was the intention of that setup is then to pick it up and move it around the country. But that's that's their intention. Good on Ford. Of course, I would add that's not happening at the moment at, at all. Uh, I have no idea where that, uh, uh, that truck and that trailer is, uh, but it's certainly not doing a roadshow at the moment. Uh, no word on when it will resume. Lead story on the podcast today. How much does an EV lose range in the cold? It was certainly something that I knew was coming, but was also surprising when my I hit my first really cold couple of months. Um, you know, minus temperatures overnight in this country, sometimes, not always, but when we had a, a really, really cold Jan Feb and it was minus figures getting in the car in the morning and it had been um, even freezing overnight and, you know, the defrost had come on and preheat had worked and everything, but then you look at the dash and you, how few miles? Well, EVs are known to suffer in the cold, and that's not the fault of EVs, that's the fault of the chemistry of lithium-ion batteries, but some do a better job than others than hanging on to their range. Recently, the Norwegian Automobile Federation didn't just take one or two cars, they took 20 of the best-selling EVs they have in Norway and put it to the test to see how winter weather affected their range. And also charging time, says Autoblog. On average, EVs lost... Well, it's 18.5%. We could call it 20% for ease of remembering that. So about 20% of range was lost in very cold temperatures on average, according to the European WLTP test cycle, of course. Uh, EVs also charge more slowly in cold temperatures. Some people call it cold gate. Uh, the Kona, the Hyundai Kona, lost only 9% of its official range. Uh, which is uh, WLTP 449 kilometres, or about 280 miles, uh, compared to its EPA range of about 260 miles on a full charge. It, uh, it did the best. Actually, the Kona uh, did the best just ahead of the Model 3 in terms of not losing as much as other cars. They tested the Audi e-tron, Quattro, 50 and 55, uh, the BMW i3, the big one, 120 amp hour, Hyundai Ioniq, the Kona, the I-Pace, the Jag I-Pace, uh, the Kia e-Nero, the Kia e-Soul, the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the Nissan Leaf 40, and the 62, uh, the, uh, the which 62 is kilowatt hours, by the way, if you're new to the podcast, uh, 40 kilowatt hours and 60 kilowatt hours refers to the size of the battery pack in the Nissan Leafs. Uh, the Opel Ampera E, uh, the Renault Zoe, but I'm not sure which one, whether it was the 40 or 50. Uh, the Seat Mi Electric, the Skoda City Go, the Tesla Model X, the 3, the S, the VW E-Golf, 
and the VWE up. That's what they tested, and some of them did a lot worse than others. The Renault Zoe didn't do particularly well, uh, which is my one, uh, losing uh, losing more than others. Uh, Opel Ampera E, I think, was the worst from memory. There's a YouTube video that's about two and a half minutes long uh, that the, uh, the Norwegian Automobile Federation made and put it on YouTube, and I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more. Well, the largest luxury car maker in India, Mercedes-Benz, is going to start selling their first EV this April, and they're going to launch 10 more over the next two years, says the MD and CEO, Martin Schwenk. And he told Fortune India that the Indian customer is different in many aspects. The Indian economy is an investing economy. Indians are pushing for more. And with that restlessness, he says, there's a brand of customers that want to go electric, but do want more from their EVs. Uh, they didn't say what the first car would be, but that, of course, will be the Mercedes-Benz EQC because there's nothing else that they have to put on the market. Uh, so the Mercedes-Benz EQC, I guess the subtitle of this article would be you can finally buy one from April in India, but the bigger picture is that there's 20 uh, cars are going to be on sale. Sorry, 10 more cars over the next two years in India uh, that are going to be electric, which is, well, that's a pretty rapid rate of progress, which we'll have to see how well they do. Tesla is trying to ensure that they continue to get EVs into owners' driveways throughout all of this disruption. Touchless deliveries are now a thing, particularly for the Model Y, which, of course, only just started the rollout to customers, and then the pandemic hit uh, through, a, through the Tesla app. So if you didn't know, by the way, if you're a Tesla owner and you are waiting for your car to arrive, you have an app on your phone and it has all the details of your car in there. Uh, you can unlock your car. So buyers can use the app on their phone to unlock the car uh, when it is delivered. So you never have to talk to another person. Uh, the car is unlocked by your app. You sign. There'll be paperwork left inside the car. You sign it and, you know, with your own pen. I imagine. And then uh, you leave the paperwork in a drop box, says Green Car Reports. If the production ramp of the Model 3 was any indication, they say, and Tesla follows past patterns of delivering vehicles before the end of the quarter, it's going to need a way of delivering thousands of Model Ys over the next week uh, to keep customers satisfied, but also safe. Well, that's the topic of our final story today with one week left of the quarter there are now thousands and thousands of inventory vehicles in north america in la alone i'm talking tesla specific by the way in la alone uh, there are 150 model threes in tesla inventory uh, says fred at electric running the analysis on this he says we can find similar amounts of inventory tesla vehicles in dozens of other markets normally tesla sells out their inventory at the end of the quarter to hit their targets there's incentives, marketing tools, foot traffic in the stores, in their malls, but of course, well, they're all closed. With new vehicles coming into inventory every month, it may well be a while before Tesla goes back to their usual low inventory style of running their business. So no question of the week this week because... You know, I had my own virus issues, but no, it wasn't the dreaded uh, one that's going around at the moment. But I did have a chest infection and was uh, and was out of action for nine days in the end. And uh, my throat, just my voice just coming back to normal. Uh, so we missed a bunch of question of the week days. So we won't have one today, but we'll set a new one for Sunday show. And that gives you a full week to get your answer in for me to read out next week. Thank you to... Oh, we better do the Endy Bit music. 239 patrons of the podcast uh, for those people that support me uh, to make this show and to spread the word and to continue the mission of teaching as many people as possible about EVs and bringing you the news every day and saving you time. I know you're busy. Uh, our premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith for Clean Tech Talent, and my latest and newest premium partners, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, an Audi of Cincinnati Easts for your Tycons and uh, Audi Quattros and Etrons. Well, thank you very much for everyone who supports on Patreon. If you'd like to get any of the shows in the archive, there are 723 uh, shows to have a listen to. If you're stuck at home and you 
catching up and you need some more content to entertain you, uh, feel free to dive into the archive. Uh, the blog is online at evnewsdaily.com. And come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.